there's this lovely thing that happens when you're publishing your own books that um, for a few days between approving the proof printed copy and the book being delivered to its first customers, you're the only person in the world to actually own the book in print. So let's have a quick look inside the covers of the proof print copy of Chris Gidlow's Citizens of the Lunar Empire, a kind of sort of sequel to A Rough Guide to Glamour. Um, here it is. It's a big fat hardback. This is 172 pages. A uh, beautiful cover art by Mark Smiley. We reproduced it inside the book without any logos or text, just so you could see how gorgeous it is. Um, the book's by my good friend Chris Gidlow. He's been working on it for, well, not working on it, but he said it was almost done back in 1997. So that's quite a while ago now. And the interior art is by Dario Corallo, if it's gorgeous, and by my daughter Sarah, if it's a beautiful technical drawing, and otherwise there are plans of the building by Julie Gidlow and Mike Hagen and Colin Driver's maps from the uh, Rough Guide to Glamour, to which this is a kind of sort of sequel, as I said. Uh, it's a big book. Um, here's the table of contents. As you can see, it goes through one building. This is the insula, um, starting with the ground floor, which has a lot of retail businesses, and then through the apartments on the first and second floors, which are quite swanky, to third, fourth floors, which are um, a little bit more run down, to the fifth floor, which strictly speaking is illegal and shouldn't have been built at all, but the senator somehow got away with it, uh, and then on the roof where the Cossacks live. Um, and then there's some other stuff. There's the standard living rules explaining how expensive it is to uh, pay your rent in the Lunar Empire and various things like that. But I'll just take you for a quick flick through the book so you can get a feel for how beautiful it is. So. There's more than 100 named NPCs living in the insula. Uh, in order that the book wasn't just padded out with useless stat blocks, we've got a typical citizen stat block. We've got explanations for how to flex it according to what's unusual about them, how old they are. And there's also the distinguishing characteristics of each citizen, which you'll see in their boxes as we go through. So here you are looking at the block from the north, so the north elevation. And these are the first bi um, businesses you'll visit on the ground floor of the insula. And then we're gonna run through, so that's starting at the icon painter, all the way along to the bar on the corner, which is also what's illustrated on that gorgeous cover. That's um, Jomez's bar. And then we go down this side, uh, the Plenty Street side of the insula to the bakery. And then we start looking at what's in the courtyard, how the toilets work, who the janitrix is. And then we pop upstairs and start going upstairs. So if I flick you through, you'll see um, two pages spread. Here's the icon painter's shop. It's about what's in the shop, what the icon painters like, um, stuff that it might be useful for an adventuring party of player characters to know about there, a few interesting adventure hooks that could lead to a session or more of fun, and the stats for a typical NPC. So it says he's a typical NPC. His distinguishing characteristics are his runes and his skills and his desires, his wants. He wants to be recognised as a visionary artist of the Lunar Way. Lucky chap. And then this carries on through. So we've got the cobbler, we've got the household good sellers, who are actually thieves, but don't tell them I told you that. I'll get in trouble. A little article here about schools in the Empire. There is no school on the block, but some of the children go to school and some of the children don't go to school. And Chris thought it would be useful to explain who does, who doesn't and why. And then we're going through the main entrance and the kids you find hanging around there all the time. Um, the Mercers, a bickering married couple, um, as far as everyone knows. The Stationers, a non-bickering married couple. Um, and then we reach the bar and we meet the bar staff and the cooks and the servers and some of the regulars. And there's all kinds of things you can do at a bar. And then we look at the crossroads, the Victory Street crossing Plenty Street. There's a crossroads, there's a terrible rundown fountain that's a bit like a bus station urinal. Um, and there's a hopefully award-winning restaurant on the corner opposite our block. There's the other two blocks nearby, the rival insula and the poor insula, to spur all kinds of feuds and worries there, and an overall map of how the insula fits in with its neighbours. You can see there the rival block to the north, the poor block to the west, and the blank block to the northwest, about which we don't tell you anything other than that there's a restaurant on the corner. So if you ever wanted to put a glamour art museum or First National Bank of Glamour or something, in easy striking range of your adventurers based out of our insula, that's where they go. And then we carry on, we look at the barber shop and the oil vendor. He's not a brew, I just want to be very clear about that. Um, and the, the, the very patriotic grocer, 
and um, the very um, workers' rights issue, Baker, that's another of our favourite characters. And then you move into the courtyard and you learn about where the water supply is, how to go to the loo in an insula, who does the laundry. Um, a few of my daughter's beautiful technical drawings there. She's an architect, I should probably say. Um, the janitrix, who's the linchpin of the insula, holds it all together in various ways. And then we go upstairs and start wandering around the apartment floors. Now each floor you've got four or five or more apartments opening off the central balcony. Um, there's convenient notes on how high above the ground you are at each stage, in case anyone's accidentally going to get pushed out of windows or hurled over balconies, because this stuff happens, I'm not going to pretend it doesn't. And then we just go through the building, and as you can see, everything, every page, there's lavish illustrations from Dario Corallo, um, characters popping out of the page, um, there's the Unriver Gang, that's if you wanted to play a sort of 11-year-old Stranger Things It game set in the capital of the Lunar Empire, that's your opportunity. Um, and all kinds of fascinating residents and their pets and their stories. And for every resident, there's um, the why would you get to know these people? Are there any adventure hooks that naturally grow out of dealing with them? And it goes onwards and upwards and onwards and upwards. We've got the ground floor, the five floors of apartments, and then the yurt on the roof. And you're not done when you get that far, because as well as that, we've also got um, the economic rules. So... I'll just, you know, as you can see, I'm not just showing you the best bits, I'm showing you what we've got in this book. And once you get to the very back of it, past the uh, Charles and Thugs and the, the Whiter, the Guardian Spirit of the Insula, and the people who might be coming into the Insula from outside for various reasons, um, we've got a section on standard of living that um, adapts Call of Cthulhu to living in Glorantha and having to pay the rent in the Lunar Empire. We've got a variant on the... Um, annual subsistence tables from RuneQuest, specifically calibrated for living in the heart of the Lunar Empire. And then we've got a few useful resources for um, living in glamour, like which day of the week are the shops all shut, and um, a usable map of the Forum District with all the places blown up and actually legible, and a quick rundown, a demographic analysis of who's members of which cults in the insula, and then a lovely short story to round everything off, Foundation Day. Well, that's it. That is... Citizens of the Lunar Empire by Chris Gidlow, more than 20 years in the making, available to buy now from the Johnstown Compendium. We hope you like it as much as we do. Bye.